Hey everyone, this is Eric Sloof over at NTPro.nl and in this video I'm going to show you how you can configure Vrealize Orchestrator per tenant in Vrealize Automation. So what's the deal? First of all we have the default tenant and this default tenant is a Vrealize Automation server and I'm logging on with configuration admin and a password and I, when I sign in I'm able to configure the infrastructure and the administration and when I jump to infrastructure at the infrastructure section I can go to endpoints and at the endpoints I can select endpoints again and what I see here in the default tenants is an orchestrator endpoint and a vCenter endpoint. This orchestrator endpoint is the default orchestrator endpoint when people choose for use the orchestrator endpoint that was configured by the system administrator. What we see is that this orchestrator endpoint is the orchestrator instance that is bundled with the realize automation because this host name is the same as this host name. So this orchestrator service is running in the vRealize automation appliance. Uh, what we also see is the default vCenter endpoints. And this vCenter endpoint is used to deploy virtual machines, create folders, do everything. And you can also bundle this endpoint or connect this endpoint to NSX and from version 7.3 and on you don't need to install vRealize orchestration plugins anymore to connect to NSX. Then the SDK of NSX and the whole API stuff will be uh, will be done from the appliance. But in this version, version 7.1, you also have to uh, install the VRO plugins in order to reach the NSX host that is specified here. Okay, so this is the infrastructure part. When I go to administration, and in administration, I can go to my VRO configuration, then you see endpoints again. And in this case, endpoints means something completely different because these endpoints are not resources that can be used by VRealize automation deployments, but these endpoints are the endpoints that can be used for anything as a service. So what you see here is a drop down list with all the anything of XAAS things available on the orchestrator host but this is only a partial list and when I select one of these instances the only thing I do is kick off a workflow because if I go to my uh, orchestrator client and I look at uh, the system part on my orchestrator host then you see a few real automation section you see an XAAS section and then you see endpoint configuration. So what I'm trying to say is if you kick off a workflow right here, for instance, configure Active Directory and I put in a name right here, test, and I click next and I say my Active Directory is dc.vclass.local uh, and uh, I'm making a typo. Uh, any uh, port is default, blah blah blah, shared session, administrator, password, VMware, and I think this one will fail, but just uh, let's fix the highlighted errors, the root is slash. Okay, what, what I'm only trying to prove here that this will run a workflow on the orchestration host. So there's no magic plugin that's running in vRealize Automation or something. It's only uh, creating an endpoint through the user interface of vRealize Automation. But what happens in the back is when you go to your orchestrator clients, then you can see that uh, if you go to the Microsoft section and you go to Active Directory configuration, after a while you will see that this workflow is kicked off and that's the one who's doing uh, all the work. So there is uh, a connection failure and we should be able to see if that's the case. I think I'm on the wrong uh, vRealize orchestrator client here. I think I have to go to, this is the built-in one, system, vRealize automation, 
XAAS endpoint configuration uh, Microsoft Active Directory configuration and now we see that this workflow has failed but it was kicked off from free realize automation okay so what I'm trying to prove in this video is something else what I want to show you is how can you configure an endpoint, a re-realize orchestrator endpoint per tenant. What we see here when we jump to server configuration in the default tenant is that we have chosen the option use the default orchestrator server that was configured by the system administrator which was the endpoint we saw here and this endpoint was the one that was hosted on the free realize automation appliance. When, I'm, uh, when I go to the design right here and at the design I'm creating an XAAS blueprint and uh, an XAAS blueprint allows you to create an item in the catalog that is connected or will kick off a workflow if you realize uh, orchestrator so that's the XAAS blueprint and what you see here is a folder called build-in and I can select this workflow bundled it has a number of input parameters and this workflow creates a virtual machine so when I say everything is okay put in the name put in the number of CPUs and just click finish and then uh, it's a provisioning type so but this, this is just an example the point is that I'm able to select workflows from the default uh, the default uh, orchestrator host uh, that was bundled with free realize automation when I'm logging out from the default tenant yeah and I go to my eng tenant eng and I log onto this host I have to specify uh, a username VRA admin in this case and I have to specify a password and after specifying the username and password I'm able to go to infrastructure at infrastructure I can see the endpoints I have the endpoints for my orchestrator and my vCenter endpoint when I go to administration and I go to my vRealize configuration for vRealize orchestrator configuration I go to endpoints or sorry to the server configuration then I've stepped away from the default orchestrator host that was configured by the system administrator and I'm using an external orchestrator luckily I have an external orchestrator host and it's the standalone orchestrator and I have specified a name a host name a port number and a username and password the thing is when I go to the design right here and I'm going to XAAS and I'm creating an XAAS blueprint then when I create this blueprint I have to select a workflow and now the built-in folder is gone and now I see the VRO standalone folder right here so when I jump back to this orchestrator client then you can see that the external VRO host is equipped with the VRO standalone folder and there is also a workflow in here that I'm able to configure so that's the big difference between these tenants this tenant has its own view realize orchestrator when I select this workflow click next I have to specify the name and have to create a form and eventually I have a, a new workflow and after publishing this workflow and uh, creating an entitlement people are able to use this workflow or kick off the workflow in orchestrator to this new item in the catalog so that proves that you can configure different orchestrator hosts per tenant by going into uh, by going into the software uh, by going into the administration and then to the endpoints and then to server configuration the same is also possible with the regular endpoints. Okay, so this is Eric Sloof. Eric Sloof is signing off. I hope this video clears up a little bit how it works and where to find the correct settings.
Bye-bye.